The Bayerat assay is a technique used within biochemistry to quantify the proteins in a sample. It is also referred to as, the, as a chlorometric protein assay because essentially we are studying the interaction between a light absorbing molecule and the protein to quantify the protein. But what is Bayerat? Bayerat is essentially a molecule that forms upon heating urea at 180 degrees Celsius. Essentially, Bayerat is just two ure urea molecules. Thus, we can explain its name. Bi means two, and then uret for urea, two urea. So, Bayerat is just two urea molecules joined together. But what's interesting about Bayerat is that it actually mimics the peptide bond that is found within proteins. Now, remember that proteins are made up of amino acids. And amino acids join to one another through a amide or peptide bond. Now, since biorette mimics that amide or peptide bond, this was actually used to study the biorette assay method. Essentially, what happened was that when copper 2 plus ions were mixed together with biorette, the copper 2 plus ions interacted with the amide bond found within biorette. As a result, this formed a complex when the copper um, when the copper 2 plus interacted with that amide bond, it formed the colored coordination complex, which absorbed light at around 550 nanometers. Then this technique was actually applied towards proteins, because proteins actually have a peptide or amide bond as well. And if we take a look at this example over here, we have two peptide chains with variable R groups, denoting that these could be various amino acids. When we took peptides and we added in those uh, the copper ions, the copper ions once again formed that interaction with the amide bonds, and we got this colored coordination complex, which also absorbed light at 550 nanometers. Essentially, it was absorbing green light and it was transmitting blue or purple light. This gave us a key insight into quantifying proteins because the more proteins that we have, the more amide bonds we'll have. Thus, we'll have more interactions and the more interactions we have with that copper and the amide bonds, the more purple our sample will be and the more absorbance uh, we will see, thus giving us a higher absorbance value in our spectrophotometer. Now, we can actually see this example over here. So when we have no protein, we're not gonna have that purple hue. When we have lots of protein, we're gonna have that purple hue, and this is gonna have a higher absorbance value than this one over here. Now, a limitation to the Bayerat assay is that this method actually doesn't work well with low protein concentrations. And that makes sense, because if we have low protein concentrations, we're not going to have enough amide bonds, we're going to have limited interactions with our copper, and thus with limited interactions, we're only going to get a very faint bluish purple color, which is not going to give us accurate results. So to get resu reliable results, uh, we need lots of proteins, the more proteins we have, the better, the more amide bonds, more interactions, more purple, higher absorbance value, more accurate birate assay. Now lastly, when we do this experiment in the lab, what is the Bayerat reagent made up of? Well, of course, we need a source of ions, so copper sulfate will provide our copper ions. We need an alkaline medium, so we can use sodium hydroxide or we could use potassium hydroxide. And then we have potassium tartrate, which is just stabilizing our copper ions. And that is essentially the Bayerat assay. It is a way in which we can quantify proteins by utilizing a colored coordination complex, which is going to absorb light at 550 nanometers. And the more proteins that we have, the more interactions we'll see. Because remember, the copper is interacting with the amide bonds. And that is the insight that we gained from Bayerat. And that is why it's called the Bayerat assay.